Welcome back to this World of Warcraft Let's Play. You're Sambo, and joining us, as always, is Seraphis, our Worgen Mage. And as you can see, we've got the Stormwind Stockade dungeon is popped up. Let's go straight into it. Here we go. And of course, for those of you who have played WoW since the beginning, you'll know that the Stockades are located in the Alliance town of Stormwind City. Things have changed up a little bit since the last time you've probably played. There's a very special boss now in there at the end of the run. Which we shall see very soon. Plus, of course, you can see that we have quests to pick up now, which never used to be the case. Good old switcheroo, kill Randolph Moloch. There we go. So if we have a look at the map now for the new uh, stockade, or rather the new stockade map. You can see here that it's still laid out the same. Here's our first boss. We've got one, two, three bosses. First one is Randolph Moloch. But yes, as I said, there's a very special boss at the end which you may not know about. That's a surprise. That's if good old Vista stop playing up, of course. We'll take a look at our party in just a minute. You can see now that these also have quests in them here. Instead of the old days, here we go, look at that, there we go, the special guest that we have now in the stockades, Defeat Hogger. And of course those of you who have played WoW <clears throat> for a long time will know exactly who Hogger is. And you can see that instead of Hello. these rooms, there we go, obtain Lord Overheat's Fiery Core, You're that's around. also a new quest. Instead of these rooms being filled with mobs, they're now actually filled with quest givers. So a bit of a change up. Of course the background for the stockades makes sense, of course they are basically the prison cells for Stormwind City where all the criminals are brought to and where they're kept of course, hence the name of the stockades. Bit of a classic run, you can see that there are still actually, there we go, thugs and petty criminals in the side rooms there, so there still are, it's just the first couple of rooms that have changed up a little bit now with the quest givers. You can see somebody's actually feared one. There we go. We are now level 31. Well done for us. And we've got ourselves a new talent point available. So just as well we got in here before we didn't. Because of course we wouldn't actually be able to run this instance if we were level 31 through the dungeon finder. We'd have to come here manually. Having said that, it's a lot easier to actually run the Stormwind Stockades manually. Because of course it's very easy to get to them. They're just literally in the center of Stormwind City itself. But of course we get our extra rewards when we run the Dungeon Finder and it's just a lot easier. And it's a lot faster as well because of course the Dungeon Finder picks players from all over different realms. It's not just from your realm. Any realm in your battle group. And of course that's another change as well from the old days. And there's someone else dinging as well. So yeah, cross realm Dungeon Finder now. It's a great idea because of course it means that you have a larger pool of players with which to draw from, so it's much faster to get actually in the queue now. Right, so we'll start taking a look at our party in a second. What have we got here? We've got ourselves a level 22 human paladin, who is our tank, doing a very good job too, I might add. We've got a healer here, a level 22 worgen priest. We have a night elf hunter, level 25 on DPS. We've got a 21 worgen druid on DPS as well, and of course we have our good selves on DPS. Shimmering Towsers, Towsers, Trousers of Fiery Wrath, plus 11 fire spell damage. That there is a very, very nice mage set of gear there, and someone else won that there by the looks of things. So all greed rolling though, which is nice, nobody's doing any nasty needs. And here we go, Randolph Malok, who of course is the target of our first quest objective, you can see up there. And you can also see we've got Lord Overheat down the other end, and of course Hogger is the main boss. Alright, so we all have to open up on this boss here, Randolph. A lot of XP. He's got 17.5k hit points to chew through. Gonna keep losing target for some reason as well. And 
and you can see he's vanishing left, right and centre there. That's because he's basically a rogue archetype. You can see he's doing stabs. And of course the fact that he vanishes means that he's a stealthy type, which means he's a rogue. Nearly got him down. 1800, 1600. And there we go. Randolph Malok slain and a Noble's Road stam Robe Stamina and Intellect and Crit Strike as well. It's not actually as good as the one that we've got, so we'll just do a greed on that as well. You can see somebody's... Think, no, everyone's done great. Oh, and I won it. I don't even need it. <laughs> there we go. Never mind. All right, we've got a hand in at the back there. Of course, we can always do that at the end. Oh, it looks like people are actually running there now to do that. Might as well hand in while we're here. Good day to you. Here we go, a bunch of XP later. and no follow-up quest. Alright, so we're probably going to head down to the east there as we now take on the second boss, which is Lord Overheat. And ironically, we're going to freeze them in place. And of course, it's a very uh, easy instance to navigate around as well. They don't have a target. See, so yeah, as I was saying, very easy place to navigate around. There's only basically three main wings. So it's a nice fast instance and of course there's some good gear that drops in here as well. Should really be clearing off the sides. These guys are in a bit of a rush. You can see someone there moaning about just wanting to go straight to the boss. Unfortunately the tank isn't going to do that. And you can see the tank there is saying if you want to lead a group make a tank. <laughs> Which is exactly right, the tank is leading this group, he's going to actually clear the whole instance and that's exactly how you should do it. Not some whingy, whiny, what is he? Not sure what he is, he's, oh, he's the hunter. So of course you can see why, why they get their reputation of being called huntards. It's because for some reason whenever there's a moron in a group they seem to be a hunter. No idea why. Planning that he's got to go, the instance only lasts about 10 to 15 minutes, it's ridiculous. Thank goodness we've got a good tank who's not going to bow to that pressure and it's just going to actually do the run as it's meant to be done. But like I said, if you are looking for some quick XP, um, the stockades are always a good run to make. Some classic drops that appear in here as well. It's a nice easy run as well, nice and fast and it's very difficult to get lost as you can tell. Of course it's been around since the very, very, very early days of Vanilla WoW. Quite often when you're in Storm and you'll see a lot of people asking in trade, hey, anyone up for a quick stockades run? And that's because it's right in the middle of the city. Very easy to get to and nice and fast. So if you are playing well and you're sort of between level 25 and 30, then absolutely do the stockades. There's nothing to lose. Plus, of course, we'll get our achievement. Here we go, some silk threaded trousers. What have they got? Stamina and intellect. Nice blue item there. We'll just be nice and greed on them rather than needing them. Now once again, you could do all these side rooms to get extra XP. But these guys seem to be skipping them for some reason. <clears throat> just concentrating on the main boss. Or rather, the main bosses. So it looks like now we're going to head down towards Hogger. Now if you've been questing around in Elwyn Forest, of course you will have come across Hogger. Now it's not like it was in the old days, in fact I was playing with a couple of friends the other day and we did the Hogger quests. Do you know what, you don't actually kill him out in the uh, open world. In the old days of course we used to have raids 
people would form level one raids. There'd be about 40 people in a raid trying to go and kill Hoggan. Nowadays, it seems to be a scripted event. If you actually go out there and try to kill him, he doesn't die. What happens is the Stormwind guards will come in and transport him away. And of course, the place that they transport him to is right here in the Stormwind Stockade. So it's kind of like a motivation to actually run the Stockades. Because if you want to kill Hogger, let's face it, who doesn't? He's probably one of the first bosses that you come across in the game in the open world. And normally he kills you. Most people have a vengeance for Hong Hogger. Now, if you want to do that, you have to come to the stockades to actually kill him. So, like I said, it's a bit of a motivation to actually run an instance if you've never done one before. Because, trust me, you'll want to seek your revenge on Hogger. There is no doubt about it. He's a nasty, nasty character. There we go. Doing very well for ourselves. Nobody's died yet. You can see there our healer forgot to pick up the core from the Fire Lord that we slayed before, so she's just asked if we can heal ourselves for a little bit. I don't think there's going to be any problems there because we're of such a high level. You can see these mobs are about level 24. Yes, they're elite, but I don't think we're in any major danger of wiping. And of course, because our tank is a, a paladin, they can actually heal themselves a little bit as well. See our paladin there, he's got 1768 hit points, got himself geared up nicely. If we actually inspect him, we'll probably find that he's gone protection spec. Let's have a look. Yep, he's protection, which of course means that he's inspect his talent points to be a tank. asked in there perhaps could we clear the side rooms for anybody who wants to stick around after the main boss Let's see what happens maybe they'll all leave never sure but of course it's good XP we go some leather boots again that we can't use but we can sell And there is Hogger, the WoW world famous Knoll, probably one of the most famous Knolls in the game, and the bane of many a player for many years. It feels so good to take him down, you can see he's got 23 and a half hit points. down to about 50%. You can see he's dealing a lot of damage to the party. If you have a look up here in the party frames, he's a nasty character. So the healer's absolutely got to do some work there on everybody. You can see that they've cast Renew on me. That was that green text scrolling up. And now Hogger has enraged. For those of you who don't know what that means, that means he's basically enraged. Every one of his abilities is going to do a lot more damage than it was before. You can see he's turned red. It's like a buff on himself. And he's nearly down. Will we get him? You see the tanks taking heaps of damage. And there we go, the Stormwind Stockades are done. Hogger is slain. Hogger's trousers, leather, the nice blue drop there. So, of course, we can't use them ourselves, but we'll still greed on them. There we go. Light be with you. Warden Thalwater, another famous character from the WoW lore. 
and he has got our reward for us here greatest of heroes please take this as a sign of my eternal gratitude we've got hogger's shiny that's a tanking ring there because it actually does dodge that's no good for us we've got a riot stick which is a staff and you can see there that's a lot better than what we've got extra 11 stamina critical strike rating and 12 per one damage put uh, per second better and plus four intellect we will absolutely take Life them now by the way you can see that they've asked if we can requeue seeing that was such a short episode we might as well because of course that's nice extra xp if we requeue with the same group we will actually be able to run the thing again you can see one of them is left there but that's okay if we run the stockades again we'll get a lot of xp and it's just saves having to go out and requeue you can see we made basically four bars of xp out of that which is fantastic let's head back to the entrance perhaps just so that we can actually hand in our other quest see if we can actually queue for that can we queue I think we're queued for it not sure hang on let's see I might be actually too high for it now now that we've dinged level 31 maybe I need to actually leave because I could be too high could be preventing the guys from actually queuing Let's just hand in before we do. There we go, the Lord Overheart's Fiery Core. Thank you so much. Lots of XP. See you later. And look at that, 250 quests completed. We've got ourselves another achievement. And yes, I am too high for these guys. I'm actually preventing them queuing. So that's it, folks. Let's get out of here. All I need to do is leave the party. And of course, that will take me out of their queue. Because I've dinged a level 31, of course, that means that it's preventing them from doing anything. So we don't want to be a butt in doing that. Hopefully it'll take us back to Darnassus, and that's okay. We've got plenty to do, seeing as we're here. Oh, and look at that. We've got a new hero's call on the board. Let's see what that is. Oh, Desolus and Southern Baron. So, of course, if you remember in the previous episodes, these are designed to lead you to new areas. If you're new to the game, excuse me, new to the game, it'll actually tell you where you need to go. And it will, uh, because of course the world of Warcraft is a huge world and we have all sorts of options in terms of leveling. Follow your nose with these quests here and they'll actually help you out. And you can see if we go into our quest log here, here we go, Desolus, Southern Barons, Stone Talon. And of course because of my add-on you can see that I've got the level next to them. So of course the next place we're going to go after the Ashenvale stuff which is level 21 to 25 is the Stone Talon Mountains which is the next level appropriate stuff in terms of where you would go after going to Ashenvale. Of course you have lots of different choices you might want to wish wish yourself over to the eastern kingdoms there's a whole bunch of zones over there but you can see that this is basically saying hey um, desolus or southern barons are a couple of choices you can make at level 30 as well all right so while we're here we're near a mailbox we're in darnassus let's check our mail i'm sure we've got lots of stuff oh and look at this of course we have lots of successful auctions let's grab all of these lots of gold once again suggesting that if you are playing the game look at that nine gold you would be a silly billy another nine gold if you weren't using the auction house a couple of episodes ago six gold there we put up all this stuff and you can see i haven't checked the mail for a little while another six gold there and we've just got money absolutely pouring in basically for very little effort another gold there goodness knows how many pages of auctions we're going to have here oh look at this got another page Lots and lots of money. We do like the shiny money. Another gold there. That was for a battering ram. We've got 16 gold here. Look at that. Light leather. That's why it's so good to be a skinner. Because it just sells so, so much. 16 gold there. Another 17 gold for more light leather. We've got 81 silver for some stone. That's coming from our mining, of course. We've got more light leather for another 15 gold. And yet another page. Good lord. Look at all this, eight gold here. We've got three gold from some hide. 47 gold from spider's silk. Can you believe it, folks? That is unbelievable. If you haven't played WoW for a number of years, these prices will seem ridiculous to you because the economy has just gone crazy. It's fantastic these days. 15 gold there, 10 silver, medium hide. 
another gold for some light hide and we're still going yet another page of auction successful auctions here coming through three gold 51 gold do you believe it folks look at that 51 gold for a tangy clam meat it's just crazy isn't it and of course players are more than willing to actually pay that amount it's just absolutely fantastic another 64 gold there and it looks like we've got a shout out here from a character called Terrafiz. Hey Sambo, I'm one of your biggest fans. I even made a new tune on the server and I based his name on yours. Uh, oh, of course he did Terrafiz and Seraphis. Hopefully I'll get to your level soon. Maybe we can talk or do a dungeon sometime. Also, I'm going to add you as a friend if that's okay with you. Of course it's okay. Uh, you're more than welcome to add me to your friends list. Uh, I would give you all my gold maybe, but not haha. <laughs> I can't because my main's on a different server. Oh well, happy gaming, Sambo. P.S. My YouTube name is Type100XXX. So there you go, Type100XX or Terrafiz on this, the Kazgaroth server. Nice of you to say hello. And of course, I do hope that anyone who's playing on the server does say hello or at least adds me to their friends list. It's always nice to see and meet up with players and viewers of our YouTube channel. All right, we got some gear in there. Let's see what we can use. A number of things that we can sell. Uh, this robe, a nice blue item there, unfortunately less than what we've already got, but looks like this riot stick here, yeah look at that, plus 12.1 damage per second, plus 4 intellect, plus 11 stamina, we are absolutely going to equip that. So we'll go to our normal, we'll swap that over, see what it looks like. It's a bit shinier, it's a bit plainer, but it's a bit shinier. Yes, we'd like to equip that, thanks. And that means, of course, we can go to a vendor and sell off all of those things. Now, what I've been doing in the background, by the way, is skilling up our mining and our smelting. You can see here that we're up to 115 out of 150. So what we'll probably need to do... And by the way, I've also bought more bags for my bank. You can see here I've been a good boy. Bought a couple of slots there. Uh, we could probably also now, with all the money we've got, that, look at that, 437 gold that we've now got. That's amazing. We could probably afford to buy some more. Let's also skill up this. We'll use our wool, wool that we got out of the stockades there to create another heavy woolen bandage. And you can see we're 143 out of 150, uh, 150 rather skill. So we're going very well. But what we want to do is head over to the crafting area and just check out uh, how our skills are going in terms of our cooking and our first aid. And of course that means going over to the vendors over in the craftsman's terrace over here. Let's go for a bit of a swim. There we go, craftsman's terrace. That's where we need to be. And all the vendors are generally over here in the one area. It's nice and handy. So we should find the cooking at the first aid. What else have we got here? Of course, a few other crafts like alchemy, etc. You'll find them as well. Here's the mining. Let's go and see if our mining is up to snuff. What, what can, can we get? I do for you? Oh, and look at this. We can actually get ourselves an expert mining skill upgrade at 125. We're currently 115, but we can now get smelt iron. We'll absolutely train that, and we can get smelt gold. So we're doing very well for ourselves and of course Farewell. those particular ore nodes will start appearing in some of the zones that we start going to, the higher level zones of course. While we're here, let's get ourselves the daily cooking quest. We haven't done this for a while. What brings you here? Back to basics, what do we need to do? Help the inhabitants of the craftsman's terrace and the tradesman's terrace make rice flour by pounding the contents of rice bark baskets. Like you know what, this is something I've never seen before. I actually haven't seen this one. What do we have to do? There are certain things that everyone needs from the basic household cook to the master chef. One of the city's most important staples is rice flour. Most families keep at least one basket of rice, rice in their houses and the residents of the craftsman terrace and the tradesman's terrace are no different. So it looks like if we look on our map, okay so we probably have to go into houses. Sounds to me like we need to steal their flour. That's a bit interesting. Oh well, never mind. Now what other crafts do we have here we've got alchemy first aid let's see if we've got any new first aid skills that we can learn first aid trainer what have we got and we've got oh expert first aid look at that we can train that up good on us and it looks like we can do silk band bandages and of course you'll see that in our bags we've started to get silk cloth which of course is the next tier up from the woolen cloth we'll be able to actually make silk bandages once we hit 150 now we're currently 143 out of 225 so we haven't got long to go don't think we've got any wool that we can use right now no we don't 
All right, let's find ourselves a vendor just very quickly so that we can actually clear out the junk from our bags. I'd say there's probably one up here somewhere. There's normally vendors hovering around this crafts era area. What have we got? Enchanting supplies. Yep, you'll do. Let's mount up so we're just a little bit faster. And we'll head around the front of this crafting supply area and hopefully this person will be able to sell up now. Because of course we've also done a dungeon run, we also want to find ourselves a whoops, a repairer because we've probably got a bit of damage from that instance. Here we go, using the good old Salamatic just to sell all of our white goods. We'll sell off that extra heavy wool bandage, the noble's robe that's no good to us and of course the old staff of ours, the medicine robe of the owl. Now just an inter interesting point by the way, this is a new vendor, if you haven't been here before, uh, if you haven't played WoW for quite some time, we've got this Reforger here, and you can actually see there's an explanation of it there, we'll run through that quickly because Reforgers are a new uh, addition to the World of Warcraft. Arcane Reforgers can modify the magical effects of an item, this magically complex uh, process is known simply as Reforging. Through reforging, a secondary attribute on any piece of weaponry, armor, or jewelry may be reduced in order to add an additional secondary attribute. In this manner, one may customize their equipment to best match their role and skills. For example, if an item afforded you a bonus to strike your enemies, but you'd rather make it attack more quickly, an arcane reforger could, for a price, reforge the item to have less hit rating, but increase your haste rating. Now, I'm not sure if there's a level cap on these. Let's see here, reforge items. Uh, here we go. Reforging allows you to shift stats on a weapon or piece of armor that is level 200 or higher. So we've got a way to go. So once you get a lot higher in level, you're able to come here and start really tailoring your gear in terms of the stats to what you'd like it to be, which is a fantastic thing. Hello, Rag. Too soon. Thought we'd summon our little companion here. Now, where do we need to go in order to find these? Ah, here we go. All right, so we're entering somebody's house here and we've got a rice basket. And we're pounding the rice, there we go, pound rice, making rice flour. Alright, so it looks like they're just going to be randomly inserted in houses. Let's see if we can find some more. Now I'm not sure that they'll actually be in the craftsmen's houses. We'll just pop up, oh there's one there. This is a normal house, I don't think there's any craftsmen in here. And there we go, pounded two out of six rice. See if we can find some more. Oh, oh, we've run out of houses. I think we need to go over to the other side, over across from the Warriors Terrace. And of course, there's the training dummies. If you ever want to come here and test your skills, test your rotations, you can uh, target up a training dummy and just go to town on them. Very, very handy. And it's such a beautiful, look at this, the treetops there, the sky shining through. It's just a beautiful city. I love wandering around Darnassus. It's just fantastic. Right, what do we got up here? We've got a general goods vendor, and they seem to have one of the rice baskets in their house. Yes, they do. Fantastic. Might have a couple, in fact. There we go. Three out of six. Four out of six. We'll check upstairs as well, just in case there's anything up there. And no, nothing up there. Bag Merchant too, by the way, don't forget about them. You can see that you can actually buy a 20 slot bag there for 11 gold. Sometimes they're cheaper on the auction house, but you know what, we got so much money, maybe what we'll do, we've got, what do we got, 12 slot bags. Maybe we'll buy ourselves in it. Oh, and actually that's an Enchanter's Satchel. There we go, Mining Sack. And that will actually hold mining equipment, but a thick hide pack is 14 slots. No, we'll keep it to friend. the auction house for that, I think. All right, do we have anybody up here who's got rice bags? Maybe nothing there, maybe up top. And of course, you can spend ages wandering around Darnassus. It's just a fantastic place to wander around and explore. There we go, a rice bag for us just as well. We did five out of six. Let's go across this bridge, across here. And I think from memory that there's some quest objectives. Sometimes they send you over here. Ah, uh, just as well we came over to this person's house. Got ourselves another rice basket, and there we go, six out of six. Let's ride on back and hand that in. And you can always, of course, follow the blip on your mini-map, or you can look on your main map and see whereabouts you need to go. We'll take a bit of a scenic journey. And 
as we head back to the cooking trainer and of course it's a good idea to do these cooking quests daily now we're terrible we're not doing them every day uh, but if you are playing the game properly you should be coming back to your major cities because they always have daily cooking or um, well mainly daily cooking and daily fishing quests in them and of course they not only net you some relatively easy XP but they'll actually skill you up as well you can see here we get plus one to our cooking skill and we also get a chef's award which is a currency that we can use later on to actually buy uh, buy cool recipes and there we go 10 cooking awards we actually got an achievement for that is another reason for doing them as well and you can see that once we actually hit 150 skill points in cooking we will achieve the rank of journeyman cook and we'll get another achievement for that as well all right so believe it or not we're actually pretty much all done in terms of our housekeeping we've done our skill ups we've uh, skilled up our mining we've skilled up our fish, uh, first aid one thing I know that we won't probably be able to skill up is our fishing uh, because we haven't been doing nearly enough of it and in fact that's probably something that I should skill up off camera is our fishing. Let's check it shall we, we'll go to P and go to professions here and you can see here that, where is it fishing, it's 114 out of 150 so it's not as bad as I thought to be honest. Cooking is definitely something that we need to skill up because that's woeful, look at that 28 out of 75. What I'll probably do off camera because I know not everybody likes fishing is we'll go over here and do the fishing daily but aside from that you can see we've actually got our mining up, we've got our skinning up, we've been very good boys and girls. Um, archaeology is something else that we have to skill up as well. We've done our smelting, we've actually got no loose raw ore in our bags because I did that off camera, there were hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them that we needed to do and of course that has netted us the ability to smelt iron and gold now which is going to be fantastic. Um, our first aid is up to date, uh, as much as it can be, you know that we need to get up to 150 there in order to get the next rank. So apart from the fishing here, which we'll grab, let's see what she's got for us today, the sister's pendant. Have you met Sister Aquin? She and I grew up together in Dolinar. And of course Dolinar is out here. If we zoom out a little bit, Dolinar is one of the first towns you come to. If you're a night elf leveling, you'll come out of your starting area and head to Dolinar. And of course if you've been watching our Let's Play series, you'll know that we've already been there. Just for a look-see. What has she got to say? She and I grew up together in Dolinar and she recently came to the city to study at the Temple of the Moon. We decided to go for a boat ride but the clumsy Orman managed to capsize it. When we got back to the shore a Queen's Moon pendant was missing in the lakes of Darnassus. Uh, and of course they're full of giant catfish who will gobble up anything. I've been catching them non-stop hoping to find the one with her pendant, don't suppose you want to help. So basically what we have to do is retrieve Aquin's moon pendant from the belly of a giant catfish and you should be able to catch them anywhere you can catch fish in Darnassus. And not forgetting too as well as actually fishing up um, a skill if you like, a skill point that we get, we actually get ourselves a bag of shiny things and you never know what's in there. Sometimes, you know what, I've actually got myself a pet from fishing uh, up a bag of shinies so it definitely pays to do these anyway let's actually equip our fishing there we go equip We've got our fishing gear and you can see I've changed gear there into our fishing outfit hello small frog and we'll just make a couple of casts here seeing as we're here there we go uh, you never know our luck we might actually catch a catfish with the pendant in it straight away it's so relaxing I just love it and look at that beautiful view who wouldn't like fishing? Well, I guess those of you who find it boring wouldn't like it, I suppose. <laughs> but I just, sometimes I love just coming here and relaxing. Listening to the wonderful music of Darnassus and of course seeing everybody run around and just, look at that, just soaking up the beautiful view. It's so relaxing, sometimes after a hard day's work. We can see Ragnaros out there, let's get rid of him, that's probably not quite right, is it a fiery fire lord, mini little fire lord, uh, sitting under the water. Somehow I don't quite think that would work. Alright, wish us luck, we'll do five casts in total, and hopefully that'll net us the catfish, look at that view, look at it in houses in the background, oh, I just love wandering around this city. If we don't get it in five casts, from then, so that's one, uh, I'll stop the episode and we'll do it off camera because I know that it's not for everybody. There we go, two casts, no luck. 
And of course, with my fishing add-on, you can see here that the skill level uh, that I currently have is 116 plus 5, making it 121 actual, if you like. And the skill required to actually fish here in Darnassus is only 2, so there's no worries about uh, fishing up any junk. Alright, 3 casts. And you can see all the while my fishing skill is actually increasing, 116, 117, it's gone up to now. That's just a screenshot and a half there, isn't it, folks? Isn't it just so pretty? Four, all right, lucky last. Let's see, fingers crossed. Will we get ourselves a catfish? And even then, will it have a pendant in it? It might not, who knows? No, there we go. All right, folks, we'll pause the video and we'll be right back once we've got our goal. Be right back. And we're back, folks. That was a bit classic. As soon as we finished filming, guess what happened? We have a look in our bags here. That's right. We actually fished up our quest objective, which is a giant catfish. And we can use that there to fillet it and find out what's inside. Let's try that now. And look at that, we actually got the moon pendant, so we're all set now. Go back and hand in, finish off our episode, we're probably way over time. That's yeah, just beautiful, isn't it? It is just a sight for sore eyes. Absolutely love running around here. Alright, here we go, Estala the fishing trainer. We've found your sister's pendant, there we go. And we're going to get plus one fishing skill, a whole bunch of XP as you can see there, and a nice bag. Farewell of shiny things. Oh, and 250 rep, and she seems very excited about that. Let's have a look and see what's in the bag of shiny things. And we got ourselves a swiftness potion. We'll sell that on the AH, and a string of alligator teeth. Let's sell off the junk to the fishing supplier right here, Greetings. using good old salamatic. I'm also going to sell our fish, because uh, right now we've got no use for them. Here we go, we'll pop that one on the auction house. What do we got here? Another Yep, another fish, we'll sell that off, and we'll sell the mutton chop as well. Alright folks, that is it, we've gone way over time, certainly hope you enjoyed that run through the stockades. Now pretty much you've seen most of the classic instances from the beginnings. We've, we've done Stormwind Stockade, Black Fathom Deeps, Shadowfang Keep, Wailing Caverns, Rage Fire Chasm, and of course the Dead Mines as well. We've still got a whole bunch more to go. If you have a look in the Dungeon Finder here, you can see we're now up for Gnomeragon, we're up for the Scarlet, Scarlet Monastery, which of course has a number of wings, we've got two of the wings of that to do. We've got Maradon, the Wicked Grotto area, and we've got Razor Friend Crawl. So we're starting to get up into the more high level dungeons now. Lots and lots and lots of them. Now of course we've got to level 34 to get through the Dungeon Finder uh, for Gnomeragon. We are currently level 31, so that's going to come pretty fast. So we'll head back down to Ashenvale soon, do some questing down there for a couple of episodes, and then we'll head back into Gnomeragon to do that instance. Of course, I certainly hope you'll join us in the future. I hope you enjoyed that episode. On behalf of myself, a Sambo, and a Seraphis, our wonderful now level 31 Organ Mage, it's us saying take care, we'll see you later, and bye bye. <laughs>